Fonzie commented and asked, could it be fasting isn't the solution to your problem? Fasting isn't the be all end all to weight loss. Let's make that clear. But fasting has played a huge factor, if not the biggest factor in my life to be where I'm at today. And that is the healthiest and happiest that I've ever been. This is BreakFast, a segment about how long I fasted before breaking, how much weight I've lost since my last fast, what foods I'm breaking it with, and how many calories I consumed, how long my eating window was, my weight after refeed, how I'm feeling, and what's next. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of BreakFast. We're kind of just going to pick up where we left off. And for people who don't know, I recently came off a week-long fast that was 180 plus hours. I'll get into the details in a second. But before that, I had gained 25.4 pounds after a nine-day binge, and then I fasted for a week straight and kind of tapered all of that weight gain off. So I gained 25.4 pounds, and then I lost about 23. I believe it was six pounds or something. I'll put it on screen. And then after that week long fast, I broke and I refed and you're gonna see all of that in a little bit. But currently I am 39 hours and 54 minutes into my current fast. I will be breaking tomorrow. I wanna thank all of you for the love and support on my last video, the comments, I read them all. So thank you so much for being by my side. Thank you for sharing your info and your knowledge and your experiences as well. There are a few comments I'm gonna go over today that are more on the critical side and I'm not doing that to like pick a fight or anything, but I wanna clear things up. We'll get to that after I show you what I broke my fast with. So one of the biggest things I was curious about when I did this week plus long fast was how hungry was I actually gonna be after I broke? How much could I actually eat? How much would satiate me? In my head, obviously, after not eating for so long, I thought, yeah, I'm probably gonna easily eat 5,000 calories, maybe 7,500 calories, maybe 10,000 calories. Maybe that appetite is just gonna be so ravenous that I can still put all of that down. Now, obviously, I'm gonna go into how I'm feeling and where I'm at and what my future plans are when it comes to fasting. But before I do that, I just wanna make sure that just because I eat X amount of calories, whether it's 5,000 calories or 7,500 calories, or I eat in a 30 minute, one hour, two hour time frame does not mean that you have to do that. The one thing that I always want to make clear here is what I do is what works for me. I fast for long periods of time because I tend to overeat, obviously, and then I eat at a much shorter time frame so I can fast long enough to either lose weight or maintain my current weight. You have to figure out what works for you, whether it's a 16-hour fast or a 60-hour fast or a week-long fast. You have to figure out what works for you. And on top of that, you have to consider other things like your physical activity, how you're feeling, are you able to get through your work day, is it too tough, et cetera, et cetera. There are a lot of factors to play into that, but we can always talk about that. You can check my older videos. I talk about a lot of those things in length. With that being said, here is what I broke my week long plus fast with. All right, everybody, this is what my refeed looks like after not eating for a week plus. Surprise, surprise, I started off with a salad. This is a Caesar salad. I did add extra cheese. I did add extra Caesar dressing, and then I also added extra croutons. This was amazing. My mouth is actually watering right now thinking about it. I mean, I'm in the middle of a fast, so I'm already very hungry at this point, but this salad, big salad, ended up 940 calories. And then as I was cooking vegetables and protein, and while I was waiting for that to finish cooking, I had three bananas for potassium. Good way to like hold off the big meal. This was 228 calories. And then I had Brussels sprouts. This was right under a pound and a half of Brussels sprouts. Two tablespoons of olive oil I added, a tablespoon of balsamic, and then I also had three Italian sausages with that. So good, so good. You guys know how I love Brussels sprouts, Italian sausage, just as much as I'm lately loving green beans and bacon, but this ended up being 1,309 calories. After that, I was actually really, really full, so I waited a little bit, but then I had chips, guacamole, and salsa. This ended up being 806 calories. It was a good segue for dessert. And then for dessert, I had two slices of cheesecake, 320 calories, and then 
I actually fell asleep. When I had this cheesecake, I was, I think, an hour and 46 minutes into my refeed. And then I zonked out. I woke up like an hour later and it was like two hours and 50 minutes into my refeed. And I said, no, I got to I got to finish with pumpkin pie, which is what I did. Pumpkin pie with whipped cream. This ended up being 676 calories. Total calories for all of this after not eating for a week plus 4,279 calories. I finished all of this in three hours and three minutes. I tried to do it under three hours, but because I fell asleep, well, this is what happened, but still right around three hours. I typically eat right around 6,000, 7,000 calories, usually around the 6,000 calorie range, but to see myself eat that much less, I was really, really surprised. Actually, the point where I was eating the Brussels sprouts and the Italian sausage, as I was like finishing that bowl, I could really feel myself filling up. I mean, it took some time to finish the rest off, but I wanted to keep myself satiated, made sure I had enough so I could continue doing this current 65 plus hour fast or 65 hour fast. We'll see if I do 65 plus. I think it's gonna be right around 60 to 65 hours. We'll see. So if you don't remember, I weighed in at 141.8 pounds the day of my 180 plus hour fast. After I refed, I weighed in at 146.6 pounds. I actually thought I was gonna weigh more than that. I thought my body was just gonna hold a ton of water because I hadn't eaten in so long and that my body was actually on the higher end. And it still well could be because the next day, which is today, I weighed in at 100 what did I weigh in at? I weighed in at 144.8 pounds. Normally, during my 42 plus hour fast that I did throughout the entire month of January, I weighed in right at 140 pounds. So my body weight is still up. I still feel like I have a couple pounds of excess body fat to lose, or at least to the point of where I was previously at, but I'm not too worried about it. I'm doing a 65 hour fast. I'm gonna be breaking tomorrow, so I have another day to like, lose a couple extra pounds or get some excess fat off of me. And then I'll decide what the next plan of action is after my next refeed. And again, after everything that's happened tomorrow, I am going to refeed, but I'm going to kind of ease into it. I'm not doing like, I'm not counting calories tomorrow. I'm not like worrying too much about what I'm eating. I'm going to give myself actually a longer time span, time frame during my refeed. So instead of three hours, I might give myself four or five, maybe even six. The one thing I'm trying to do is not be too strict on myself where I feel like I'm getting overwhelmed, if that makes sense. It might be different for other people. I know I am really good at being strict at following my rules and doing what I have to do, but I just don't want to like go gung-ho into it right now, especially after doing a seven day plus fast and all that kind of stuff. I'm just trying to ease into it. And like, I'm just telling you all of this for transparency's sake. So you know where my head is at, how I'm feeling, knowing that even though I did that long fast, I still wanna do like the, you know, play it slow, slow and steady wins the race kind of thing. At least that's the plan. So tomorrow's gonna be more of a lax day. I'm not gonna record, I'm not gonna do any of that. I'm just gonna enjoy my time, enjoy my refeed, and then kinda go with the process after that. I'm still exercising, I'm still lifting. I actually have noticed that my lifts have gotten stronger. I'm, even in terms of intensity, my intensity has kinda seemed to peak up quite a bit as well. So those are all good things. I'm gonna keep all of you posted as I continue to do this. But before I go, there are a couple comments I wanna go through so I can just clear the air. There was a comment here that says, typical for fasters, unfortunately. It always happens, binging and gaining, I mean. That's why I stopped long fasts. So in terms of this, yeah, for a lot of people, when you deprive yourself of food for such a long time, obviously there's going to be a point where you just can't take it anymore. And this isn't just with fasting in general. This is just going on a typical diet. People will restrict. They'll restrict certain things, whether it's macros or calories or a combination of both. And then they kind of go off the wagon. It happens. And so really, I don't think it applies to just fasters in general. For people who restrict, for people who restrict things that give you pleasure, yeah, there's going to be a point where you break and you're going to want it and it's it's a part of life. But here's the thing too, and this is what I want to add on to that, is it's not just long fasts 
at least for me, it's not just long fasts. You have to understand that my binging issues, my overeating issues have stemmed way before I even knew what fasting was. This has been an issue for me since I was a teenager. One of the reasons I used to go to therapy because of my disordered eating. Anyway, let's not beat around the bush here. Yeah, obviously I have issues when it comes to eating. If that was not an issue, I wouldn't be here talking with you right now. We wouldn't be having this conversation. I wouldn't be eating 6,000, 7,000 calories. If it was easy for me to just eat three times a day, eat three square meals and do it. But I, I, you guys know this story. You've heard it so many times. I just want people to understand that this issue did not happen when I started fasting. This issue did not start happening when I did longer extended fasts. This has always been an issue for me. But the one thing that I have figured out or at least that I have learned, is that when I do these fasts, when I do extended fasts, when I start to incorporate other things into it, like, you know, thinking about what I'm doing and exercising and all of that, I have figured a solution out, or at least a solution that works for me that has kept me at the healthiest and happiest in my life. And I need people to respect that. I know people aren't always going to agree with everything I say, and that's fine. That, that really is fine. But I'm also not here telling you how to live your life, telling you how to eat, how you should do this or that. I am just sharing my experiences with you, so hopefully you can take some of that and it might be useful for you. They might be tools for you to move on and do what you need to do. So another comment here also says, I don't think three hour intuitive eating windows with rolling 65s is the answer. You have a great fasting muscle, but it might be time to work on the portion control muscle with OMAD and CICO, C-I-C-O, calories in, calories out. So here's the thing too, is the one thing that people need to also understand is the rolling 65s I've done, the rolling 90s I've done, the rolling 42s I've done, all of that has led to the success of where I'm at today. I have never weighed this low in my life ever, except for maybe when I was a kid, maybe when I was like nine or 10 years old, but I've never been in this position where I've had my weight loss stay this steady and this low for this long, for almost a year and a half. I have practiced OMAD before. I have practiced calories in, calories out before. I have done that so many years for so many decades in the past, and I know personally it doesn't work for me. But I also want people to understand, we talk about portion control and all of these kind of things, and it's not that I'm discrediting it at all, because I think people also need to see that when I first started doing this, when I first started doing extended fasts and refeeding and refeeding whatever I wanted to, my refeeds were a lot higher. Even before I started filming, I am almost certain that I was eating closer to 10,000 calories per refeed. My times in eating was much longer. I was eating the foods I was eating, they weren't like just vegetables straight up. It was just junk food and it has been a learning process. I've been learning as time goes on to, yeah, maybe I do need to portion control. Maybe I do need to think about what I am putting inside me and that's actually something I'm doing. If you've watched me for long enough, I think you have noticed that the kind of foods I've been eating have been changing. They've been shifting. My mindset has been changing. That's why over time I've also realized that the mental game in this is so important. The getting back up and doing it over and over and learning from your experiences and learning how to do things better. And even if it's not the best today, it could be tomorrow. Get up and do it again. Never give up. Cliche, but it's so true. And just to segue into that, Richie Rich left a comment that says, keep evolving your diet and eating plan, my man. It's a lifestyle. And that's definitely true. It is a lifestyle. But I love how he says, keep evolving. And I think that can resonate, that can relate to a lot of us, to all of us. You need to keep evolving what you're doing. If you are thinking that you just have to get up and do it one certain way and it has to be perfect, I have bad news for you. It's not going to work out according to plan. It might for a little bit. You might have that steam behind you to do like roll 110%, but it's not always going to be that easy. And so you need to keep doing this to learn from your mistakes. Evolve not only your diet, but evolve your lifestyle, evolve your exercise plan, evolve what's going on in your head, learning from your mistakes. It's a great comment, Richie Rich, and I appreciate you saying that. Finally, the one comment I want to put here is from Shelly that says, glad to see you, missed you, I missed you too, Shelly, uh, sent you some change. So I just 
Shelly has been a huge supporter, and Shelly has been donating numerous times. So Shelly, thank you so much. My struggle is similar. We will figure it out together. And that's another part here too. And that's one of the reasons that I love making these YouTube videos is we can share these experiences. We can learn from each other. So with that being said, guys, I am going to end it here. Patreon.com forward slash finally fasting for one-on-one -on -one accountability coaching, accountability check-in posts, and if you just want to support your boy. I know somebody had left a comment that said that they couldn't get to my Patreon by going to that link. So if you're having trouble finding that, just type in finally fasting Patreon or something similar to that in Google, and I'm pretty sure you'll find me. So uh, if I need to find an actual link, I'll look into it. Otherwise, guys, I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you.